Hello, hello everyone. Say hello, pumpkins. Say hello. Yeah, I am here with Orchid and Beans, F1 Mini Golden Doodle Babies. And this is their four week video. Yay. Hello. Yes. <laughs> See, we're actually walking around today. Some of us a little wobbly, but we're doing it. Yeah. Get in that donut. Get in there. Hi, buddy. Hi. <laughs> what are you doing? I can barely talk today. I know. Sorry. I know that's not fun to listen to. Anywho, we are um, having our preventative deworming this week. So exciting. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm tired, guys. I'm so tired. Anyway, um, that is this week. Uh, continuing with gruel, chunking up a bit. Some of our, even our little guys are chunking up. Yes. Speaking of little guys, say hi, buddy. This is a litter of 10. I mean, they don't seem to be a lot right now when they're so tiny, but let me tell you, by week eight, when they're ready to go home, you're gonna see them running all around. Say, we get bigger, we get bigger, and then it starts getting a little on the crazy side. Yes, it does. Um, in this litter, we have seven boys, three girls. Oh, I'm sorry, I promise not to yawn through the whole thing. Promise, promise. My three littles are, well, two of the three are sick. The third one is sneezing. We're watching her. It's just a common head cold, but still. But still, one of those things. Hi! So they're not in here today. Hopefully they will be better by next week and they can come out and join us. Yes. All right, so I'm gonna go through these babies. Anyway, I was saying all that, say that. I'm tired, because been up with them. Not sleeping at all, at all. But let me go through these babies. I'm gonna go through the boys. We have seven boys and somebody's pooping on the field. It is, it is a domino effect with poop, with, with um, litters. Am I right, breeders? You know it. When one starts, it just keeps going. All right, let me see if I can continue this while I gather. Thank you, little dark greeny boy giving us what we need here. Thanks, buddy. We'll just pile that up with the rest of the potty pads, huh? Yes, thank you. <laughs> Are you gonna talk to me? I wasn't recording you pooping, I promise. Nope. Just getting the after effects. There we go. Hi. Hi, babies. Aren't they cute? Look at those blocky little English faces. So um, Orchid is our uh, one of our white English cream golden retrievers. So she is a white retriever. She is from the English lines. And then we have um, Beans, which is our red toy poodle. And Beans is the reason that we have a lot of these adorable little white markings coming through. Can you see those? There they are, like a little on the paw there. All right, let me go, let me grab, who was I gonna grab? I think I was gonna grab Orange. All right, orange collar boy, who is the biggest of this litter, which is not big, but he's just the chunkiest. Say, I'm highly food motivated. And that is why we are soulmates. Yes. Look at the little white on his chest. He is red. Even though this is an English cream litter, these are reds because of daddy being a red poodle. So if we wanted the white, white English creams, we would have to add more white in there. And little guy here who desperately wants to see his mama is little red collar boy, tiny, tiny little splash of white on the chest. I mean, ever so small, hardly recognizable. And he is a red, but I almost call him a two-tone. Look at his back. There is a light color underneath the dark. So as he grows out, he's gonna have a little lighter effect to him. All right, green collar boy is the darkest red of the entire litter. Look at that. I mean, red, red, red. Um, in Orchid's, I'm not, sorry, did I say, yeah, Orchid. Orchid and Ivy, they're sisters. In Orchid's litter, um, or in her history, is a red retriever. So we are getting 
all of those red genetics coming out. And I'm sorry for my voice, guys. My vocal cords are just horrible. I've been talking too much. And getting over this cold, it's just taken my voice away. So I apologize. I know that's not fun to listen to, but it is what it is. All right. Here we have um, blue, and I don't think that's really white. No, no white on him. He's a solid, solid red. Hi. Hi there. Okay, I'm sweet and I'm fat, and I love you. Yes. All right, so let's see. We did one, two, three, four. Here, let's go with black collar boy, also red. And look at him with that little distinguished white chin. And there's white on the chest. But look at the little chin. Hi. <laughs> Hi, buddy. Yeah. Look at these babies. They weren't doing anything last week. Now look at them. Yes, they were ready to eat. We pooped. We're playing. We're ready. All right, next, let's go to little yellow collar boy, the smallest of the boys. And he is a peanut butter color. He's actually quite light. He is the lightest color of everybody and the smallest of the boys, but not the smallest of the whole litter. Hi, hi. So he's got that sandy peanut butter color. All right, Sleeping Beauty over here is white collar boy. And he is also a red. And you can also see a little bit of a two-tone in there. And, you know, he's little, but he's quite chunky, and he's got a very blocky head. Hi. Hi. Yes. You're just so cute. All right, now let's do our girls. Hello, girls. Let's start with lime green collar girl. And all the girls are pretty small, so they're on the lower end. Um, they'll be on that 20-pound range. And we have a little white chest here with lime green collar girl. She is um, the lightest, well, I mean ever so slightly the lightest color of the girls. So she is what we call more of a light red with some apricot hues. You can really see that apricot, which is more of an orangey hue. But she is de definitely still called a red. Look at Greeny go. Look at Greeny go. All right, the smallest of the girls is our little lavender collar girl. Hi, hi, little peanut. I'm just a little peanut. I got to get you in my hands a little better, in my hand a little better. Hi, hi there. Look at you. Look at those ears. You are so sweet. Yes, you are. Oh, come sit in my lap. You just sit yourself there. All right, and then last is our pink collar girl who is over here playing with big boys. And like I said, all the girls are, are at the lower end and she has just a tiny, tiny bit of white on the chest. It's very small and she is a light red. So what we thought would be a, a very light color is actually turning out to be a pretty red litter. Look at you all. Look at you babies. Yes. As you can see, they're playing with each other. They're trying to play on with toys. And if you see them compared to like the donuts or my foot, you can kind of gauge how big they are. I know that my videos and camera seems to make things appear a little larger. Whoops, sorry, baby girl. A little larger than they are, but they are quite small. They are still going to be the mini size though. They will still be, are you falling asleep? Are you falling asleep, buddy? There's still gonna be that 20 to 30 pound range. Are you going over? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Come here. Come here. I'm so tired, man. Here, you just lay right here in my lap. Hi, Reddy. Hi, Reddy. So basically, we're just spending more time socializing, getting them some time away from mama to give her a little rest. And um, at four weeks old, we are halfway there, everybody. Can you believe it? Halfway. That cannot be. I mean, it feels like I just announced that Orchid was expecting. And look at us. We're halfway to the going home point. And that means puppy picking is coming up, guys. Um, you will be getting out your puppy picking information email this week. And that'll just give you um, a little bit of information as to what to expect during your selection appointment. 
All the owners are invited out to the farm for a one hour picking appointment. Those that cannot make it can do a virtual appointment with Zoom or FaceTime. And uh, if you can't do that, then you can just choose off a of video and at your appointment time, let me know um, which pick is yours. See, simple, simple, huh? I will say I'm not quite um, envious of the first pick of the litter because there are so many great choices and everybody has that wonderful blocky face. And so first pick of the litter might be a little difficult. Um, first couple picks, but usually after that, it's kind of a domino effect uh, with everybody picking. Um, I will say that uh, when you come for picking, one thing that's helped me is when you come, have your top two or three picks in mind. We will start you two at a time. We don't want to overwhelm you or the puppies. And we find that you can really ga uh, gauge their personalities a lot better um, when you have no more than two. When you start adding a whole bunch in here, they just start playing with each other. It's hard to focus. And then especially for the first couple of picks of the litter, it becomes more of a frustration than fun. And we want this to be fun for everybody. So that's why we're recommending that. Are we winding down already? I mean, look at this baby. Yeah, I am down. I am down. Let me sleep. What's on my head? I don't have anything there. You know what? I didn't eat this morning. I didn't eat, so I should check my Dexcom. <laughs> I'm diabetic. I should check my Dexcom because I have been physical this morning without eating can bring me to a dangerous low, but my Dexcom has not alerted me. But it is interesting to pay attention to what dogs um, start coming up to me and who might naturally be able to get that scent. Um, I'm doing a couple of diabetic detection dogs right now, and that's kind of the way I start testing who is going to be capable of that part of it, who is going to go ahead and uh, be able to recognize the different smells that they smell when a person is on a high or a low. And then, of course, be smart enough to be able to alert them, still be an awesome pet, still be an awesome partner, still be everything that the person wants. We're putting all that in a little pet. Yes. Hello. Hello there. So uh, selection, that's what I recommend. Getting your top two or three picks in mind. If you're fifth pick of the litter, start getting your favorites all the, all the way to number five. And that way, when you come in, um, you are armed with, you know, your reasons for picking everybody. And you're not just overwhelmed with a bunch of cute fluffy balls because that can get overwhelming. And like I said, we want this to be a fun process, not a frustrating one for you. I will also be making notes about um, bringing your children with you, bringing other people with you, and that'll all be in your picking information email so that you are armed with that when you come and you know just who to bring and what to bring and so on. Uh, I'm gonna let you watch them here for a little bit. And um, next week is our temperament testing already. Week six, those will be emailed to you. And then you'll be out here week six to do your selection. Week seven is when they move to their um, uh, crates by themselves. They will be training with a buddy. And then they'll move by themselves. And then week eight, they go home. Look at the little tip of the tail. This is orangey boy. Look at you. You're just too cute for words, aren't you? All right, I'm gonna stop yakking. You guys are tired of me. I'm tired of me. And I will see you guys next week. Have a good weekend.